Hey up guys, uh, Birmingham. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what, I've got a feeling that um, things are just not going right today, I don't know why. Um, well, I've got an idea. Anyway, um, yeah, I'm taking a trip down to London uh, this lunchtime, um, over to Heathrow, uh, but I'm not um, doing it the conventional way. Uh, normally I'd take the train down to Euston or Marylebone, and I'd take the underground out to Heathrow. But today I thought um, I'll try the coach instead, and the cheapest one I could find online was Megabus, believe it or not. Um, and they depart from Brunel Street, which I believe is just kind of right there somewhere. Uh, so I've got to find that. And then we're going to go on the coach, it's going to take about three hours or so, um, including stops. Um, never tried it before. Let's see how um, it goes, and I will catch you on the coach. Cheers for now. Yeah, so actually the Megabus departure point was, as I said, just around the corner. Uh, probably about a two minute walk from New Street Railway Station, which, to be fair, is much more convenient than Digbeth Coach Station, where the National Express buses go from. Now there's a couple of stands here, and probably room for three coaches, I reckon. Now handily, there was a Megabus already here, bound for Southampton, and yeah, I must admit, when seeing the coach close up, I thought it looked pretty smart. And all I could do at this point was just cross my fingers and hope that my coach would be something similar. Now, usefully, there are departure boards at the stands that tell you all the times and destinations of the mega bus services leaving from this point. Now, here's our coach, which is the 1250 to London, calling only at Reading and Heathrow, where I would be getting off. Uh, now, when I think back, uh, this is much better than the solitary post that the Flixbus provide in Birmingham. Uh, it just has absolutely no information on it whatsoever. I'll tell you what, uh, check out this video here if you, if you want to compare and contrast the two services. As well as providing cover when it's raining, uh, there's also an information board with details of the Megabus onboard policy, a luggage allowance and contact email address, etc. At this point, I thought I'd better go and get some provisions for the trip. Now when I returned, another Megabus had turned up, amusingly named Basil Bus. <laughs> I love the fact that Megabus had taken to naming their coaches, but I didn't know this. Uh, and I'd be interested to find out what other names are out there, and of course, uh, your favourites. Now this coach, uh, which I'm reliably informed via the internet, is a Volvo B11RT Plaxton Elite Interdeck. Uh, but it was displaying a sorry not in service notice on its uh, digital display here at the front. And so I carried on waiting for my coach to arrive, but yeah, as we got nearer and nearer to the expected departure time, nothing else had turned up. Anyway, as it happened, Basil Bus was actually our coach, which was great news, wasn't it? And a proper branded mega bus, at last. And I'm not sure why it didn't have the destination indicated on it, but. Yeah, around 1300 hours, the Megabus staff, uh, which had shown up on the curbside, had decided it was time to board. Uh, so we all shuffled into line and handed our luggage over. Now, this was really well organised. Uh, one chap loaded the cases after asking for our destination, and the other guy checked our tickets and seat reservations. And you'll notice here that the destination displays have now changed to London, Victoria. Hello, mate. Well, two. He throw Pick two or two. Yes, Cheers, mate. This is why I'm your seat reservation number eight. Thank you very much. Aboard in the coach, there was one row of three seats downstairs behind the driver, and then you went upstairs to the single deck seating area. I guess this is why it's called an interdeck. Now my seat, at number eight, uh, was in the second row. Uh, inevitably, there was somebody sitting in it, but uh, they moved easily enough. Somebody trust me, I think. Cheers, cheers, mate. It was a pretty good view from here, to be fair, as I was able to see over the front row. Now, because it's in a raised position, uh, I was actually over the driver's cab, so, yeah, it's very similar to a double-decker, really. Our engine started at 13.15, uh, 25 minutes behind schedule at this point. And although it was pretty grey outside, the driver decided that we all needed to feel the benefit of the coach's ice-cold air conditioning system, which streamed out of the vents above the windows. Yeah, um, somebody would have to say something about this. Anyway, we left stand at 13.19, and as I glanced back, I noticed another megabus had pulled up behind us. 
So I'm therefore assuming that uh, we were late because we were waiting for that to arrive so that passengers from that coach could then connect down to London on our coach. Now I thought we'd head for the Aston Expressway, uh, then the M6, M42 and the M40. But instead we headed south out of Birmingham on the A435 and like, kind of through Kings Heath. Uh, you know, it was so busy this way that almost an hour after we were supposed to depart, we travelled a grand total of four miles. <laughs> so I saw a National Express bus coming the other way down the road too, and so it's not exclusively a mega bus thing. And you know, I know there's a few coach drivers who watch my channel, so yeah, if anybody can explain why we took this route, I'd be really interested to know the reason. Anyway, we finally made it to the motorway at uh, Junction 3 of the M42, uh, where predictably we were met by three lanes of queuing traffic. <laughs> this didn't take long to clear though, and we were soon making steady progress along the M40. Right, so let's have a look at the seat and yeah, here we have integrated grab handles with the Kotex that nobody uses. Now, there's no seat back table unfortunately, which would have been handy because uh, despite there being ample leg room as you can see here, uh, there's no seat back pouch either. So really there's nowhere, there's nowhere to put your stuff. And the seat itself had an anti-macassar display in the number and that was quite useful. And yeah, all in all was reasonably comfortable. Uh, there's a drop down armrest here above the seat belt sockets and down the side of the seat well you know, there's a few bits of grime but you know, i've seen worse to be honest uh, there's a recline lever here but uh, that didn't really seem to do anything to my seat unfortunately a uh, twin usb power is provided and was working fine and uh, note the floor is not carpeted but yeah that's okay isn't it uh, much easier to clean i suspect Above the seats were individual air vents and reading lights. Uh, the vents didn't really vent anything, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, the main source of the icy blasts coming from this vent here, uh, which was blowing onto and then down the window. Uh, it was still freezing cold on the coach, uh, so much so that uh, there was this like tattoo covered guy who I reckon was probably the hardest bloke on the coach. Uh, he had to go down to the driver to ask him if he could turn the heating up. And then what we then experienced was like heat coming out from somewhere. Uh, but the air conditioning was still belting out freezing cold air, so <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why it's such a problem to to get these things right. But uh, there you go, I suppose. So the next thing I did was try and kick back and relax with the free Wi-Fi. It did look quite promising at first, this, but ultimately it just wouldn't connect. So, yeah, that's yet another unsuccessful coach Wi-Fi experience to add to the list. Now, talking about relaxing, well, the seat next to me was occupied by someone um, who'd obviously reserved seat number seven. Uh, so there wasn't a great deal of space to be had, but the thing was, most of the seats behind were, like, completely unoccupied. And he was getting off at Reading. So, <laughs> I don't know about you, but if it was me, once I knew nobody else was getting on at Birmingham, I'd have just moved to an empty double seat and then we would have both had more space and he could have looked out the window or sat in the aisle whatever he wanted to do <laughs> but uh, no he insisted on sitting next to me all the way to Reading I mean it's his prerogative isn't it but I don't know what, what would you have done 
Well, we carried on for a bit until we hit another queue of traffic, and I don't think it was related. But the overhead signs informed us that there were reports of a cyclist on the motorway. Well, you couldn't make it up really, could you, this? Well, I never saw them, but I did see an ambulance driving down the hard shoulder at high speed. Uh, but, you know, all I can say is I hope nothing too serious had taken place. Anyway, uh, we turned off towards Oxford, and, and then we turned off again, uh, driving this massive coach through some like really small villages, like Noonham, Courtenay, and Shillingford. Uh, as we headed um, towards Reading on the back roads, I guess um, uh, it was still an ominous 16 miles away at this point. A nice countryside, though, I suppose. Okay, so uh, yeah, just before Reading, I thought I'd go and check out the toilet, and um, I like the sticker here, by the way. Yeah, it was okay, really. A bit of a squeeze, but aren't they all? Uh, mirror here above the tiny sink. Uh, running water is operated by this button. No soap in the onboard dispenser, but the hand dryer worked, and there was a handy bin just to the left here. Uh, there was alternative liquid soap provided next to the loo, um, which, yeah, it was good to see. Uh, all in all, I was pretty happy with the toilet, really. I climbed back out and headed back to my seat. Uh, we were just coming into Reading now, um, arrived almost an hour late. Uh, no problem for me, but, uh, yeah, if I were connected onto, say, a train service from the adjacent railway station, it could have been an issue, that. So yeah, we didn't hang about here and proceeded to head towards Heathrow. Uh, talking to the driver during the stop, he said it'd only take about 45 minutes to get to the airport, so yeah, overall that made it a total journey time of around about three and a half hours. And then for those heading on towards central London, you'd have another 45 minutes to an hour to go. Now I reckon the route we took was about 126 miles. Um, so that works out at an average speed of just 36 miles an hour. But having said that, uh, and I've also mentioned this in other coach videos I've made, now if you're not in any particular rush, then uh, once on board you can just kick back and relax until you get to your destination, uh, without necessarily the bother of changing trains. Um, yeah, taking the train, including the underground out to Heathrow, would have been quicker, but you know, how does that stack up against the price? Well, I paid £16.96 for my one-way ticket, which I booked a couple of weeks in advance. Now, National Express at the same time wanted £30.10 for their direct service, which was the same route uh, around about the same time. And taking the train, changing in London, uh, would have been over £50. So ultimately, I thought it was pretty good value, and to my absolute surprise, what I expected for the price this time around, Megabus really delivered. Now the coach was clean, the driver was friendly, and the ride quality was very good. Yeah, I've got to be honest, this was a really big and pleasant surprise. And also, the arrival into Heathrow by road is much more exciting than the train, isn't it? Now, seeing the aircraft landing and the advertising displays around Heathrow, I think, is genuinely exciting. And you get that sense of anticipation, don't you, just before a flight. Yeah, the coach was late, but... You know, that wasn't really the fault of the coach company or the driver. You know, trains can be late too, can't they? Now, at the end of the day, both modes of transport have their advantages and disadvantages. And you really need to weigh those up in conjunction with your onward travel plans, if you have any, before making a decision. Anyway, we arrived into London Heathrow Central bus station at 16.48. Uh, yeah, 48 minutes behind schedule. Now I collected my bag from the side of the coach and headed for the entrance to Terminal 2. Before I made my way inside, I took a minute or two to just sum up my thoughts, really. Okay, guys, just got here um, at Heathrow Central Bus Station and on the mega bus, um, which is the one behind me there, um, all the way down from Birmingham. Uh, what do you think? Uh, let me know. It's the first time I've ever done it by coach. Uh, would I do it again? Not quite sure. Um, the train is a bit quicker, I think. 
I mean, we've been on the road about three and a half hours, it's a little bit late, um, but that's not Megabus's fault necessarily, the traffic was quite busy. Um, but yeah, it was interesting, um, and it's not a bad price either. As I said, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching, and um, join me on another adventure soon. As always guys, cheers for now.